Today on Community Watch, we will be talking with John Druckenmiller of Hometown Headlines, uh, always a fascinating guest with uh, news, and he has a new podcast. So it should be a great show. Stay with us. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome to Community Watch, and I am, at least for the moment, solo today. Uh, Greg is occupied with some summer business, might join us uh, midstream today, uh, and I, I hope he does, uh, because we have today one of his favorite guests, certainly one of mine, uh, John Druckenmiller of Hometown Headlines, and um, I, I think... Uh, the shows that we've had with uh, Druckenmiller on as guest have been among our best shows. So uh, it's something you want to stick around for. We'll, we'll learn about his new podcast. I'm, I'm curious about podcasts anyway because I really listen to a lot of them now. Uh, but it should be a really interesting show. Stay with us. We'll be back with our guest right after this. One forty five over ninety two. One eighty over one eleven. I had a heart attack, a cardiac arrest, and then a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a heart attack or stroke are far from invisible or silent. Get back on your plan or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhpp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. Welcome back to Community Watch, and we are very happy to have with us today uh, John Druckenmiller. Welcome. Welcome back, I should say. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Hope everybody's doing great today. Uh, so, um, the big news with you is this new podcast. So, you know, I want to hear the story of... Now, you want the, the whole story? The, you I, want, want the, I want whatever part or part or whole of the story you feel comfortable sharing with us all right okay. well, my life uh living on the internet the way i do i even got hacked today on my facebook page so that shows you uh your, your life is exposed. You're special you're well, special yeah right yeah that's a nice way to put it <laughs> um podcast something we've kicked around for maybe six to eight months we have done um a few surveys you know unscientific with our readership would you listen to one what would you like uh, a lot of times it was, you know, I thought, okay, it's going to be entertainment or, you know, the big genre, of course, with podcasts or true crime. We've had the one here in Floyd County that I think really kind of started podcasts, mm -hmm. whatever that murder case was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, let's see what people want. And the um, overwhelming number, maybe 240 people surveyed, was number one, we want more news, more local news. And I thought, okay, you got, you know, you got what we do, hometown headlines, you got the Rome News, you got WRGA, WLAQ, uh, you know, about 500 other little websites in town from my mama's basement.com, whatever. And I thought, the last thing we need is more news, and it's the other way around. Anyway, uh, when radio uh, came to an abrupt conclusion, let's just go ahead and say the politics got a little heavy. Got a little deep. <laughs> I recommend if you're going to be in radio or media, don't have a partner on city commission. Okay? <laughs> I, I, you think in politics, you're going to realize something. You're not going to be liked by everybody. I mean, uh -huh. it's just part of the business, and things are going to happen. Anyway, 
Um, that brewed for about six months and finally came to a head. And uh, by chance, it was the day before we went on a vacation. And I had always had the podcast thing floating around back there and uh, had some spare time in the morning. Each morning, sat around and played a little more, played a little more. Uh, maybe ordered a little bit of equipment, a new microphone, which I can't even use yet. And thought, okay, we come back June 3rd, we're going to launch a podcast. And the idea was to do really just a short version first, maybe six, seven, eight minutes. Here's today's headlines. Here's a few insights. Here's what's coming up. Uh, what's on our news radar. So, I mean, something more than traditional newscast, something mm -hmm. more you're going to see in a newspaper. Uh, some rants or news, you know, views, that type of stuff. And on June 3rd, we did the first one. And we got a pretty large audience. And, you know, this is what, you know, week number two, we did one long form one. Jay Shell and Harry Brock uh, sat down with us for about 45 minutes. This is a more, sound like a studio environment for that. Although, it's not any visuals, but that one got a, a very good response on parking in downtown before the city commission vote last mm -hmm. night to, due to three hours and eight to six enforcement. So, but bottom line is this, there's a market for it here in town. It's not huge, it's a different thing. But I was telling you off air about this, so is that the right term here, off, off camera on this. The surprise to me has been the interest overall, but it is also from the so-called uh, older generation where you don't think, you know, it, you know, I can't find Spotify, or I don't know what Bleak Breaker is, or I don't know what this is. Other way around. I mean, we're getting emails, you know, into our second week here from people 60 plus saying, we like this, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's weird. So, the, the podcast can be any length you want it to be, right? Correct. Okay. We're, and we're trying to market it, or put it together, or offer it in two scenarios. One is the day's quick headlines. We call it all the radio you need in eight minutes. Or maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less. The longest one so far has been nine minutes. And then part two is the longer term one where we're working uh, right now with Brand Red Studios over here in Bale Street. Mm. Ryan Simmons, those folks do a very nice job. Uh, they got a podcast studio. And we did the parking one there with Jay and with Harry and put it up uh, Thursday night. And again, drew a very nice audience Thursday night, Friday into the weekend and right before, prior to up to the vote last night by the city commission. And it was a lot of views, opinions, what they've been through. And again, very good feedback on that. So we, we're gonna try to do you know the short term every day, weekdays, here's your headlines, here's your news, your views, things you need to know about today. And then switch over to do the long form. And the most disturbing thing we've found so far is something I think some of your audience members have probably picked up. I have a nasty habit of doing. Mm -hmm. And as I play back these, believe me, we don't do a lot of editing of the daily, the daily uh, podcast. When I play these things back, I'm hearing that thing and I'm doing the, you know, the, the head slam kind of thing. <laughs> anyway, maybe by next week we'll get rid of that too. I guess I could go through and edit it out, but that's a little bit beyond you. Yeah. But really, it's just trying to give fun. Uh, Roman, see, North, Roman Northwest Georgia, another uh, option for news, maybe a little different news, and a news we hear, one of the other things we hear the most about is thank you because we can now hear you when we want to hear you. And that's, A, it's flattering, B, it's humbling, but C, it's the convenience. You can get stuff when you want it, and I think that's what powers podcasts. Mm -hmm. You said you're a podcast fan, I mean, right. and you, you probably shop some genres that you like the best. But the thing is, when you do have that spare hour or two, bam, you can go in and hit that button mm -hmm. or in your car or whatever. The convenience aspect, is that, you think, the reason that your podcast in, in particular is, is working well? Why, I mean, why do we need news in another format uh, except for that? Or, or is there some other reason that, that makes it appealing? Well, of course, the, the what I will use is this, and what you take the marketing approach is we're helping you. You always heard about cutting the uh, cable, whatever it is, when you go to Dish TV. We're trying to help you cut the antenna to be married to a radio station at 7 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock, 8.30. No, it's right here when you want it. Yeah. And, you know, we'll, what we present is the day's headlines. And I think enough information in that, you know, tight seven or eight minutes, the things you need to know for the rest of your day as well. And maybe into the next morning, yeah. you know, like I said, news ahead, 
uh, peaks and valleys, we call it the highs and lows in northwest Georgia, where it's kind of a, maybe some many, uh, many views and news about, you know, good things and bad things, mm -hmm. and we try to balance it. So, But yeah, it's news on demand. It's, you can get it when you want. You can play it on your cell phone. You can play it on your computer. It's, it's easy. Even I, who never had a Spotify account until last week, have now, you know, I'm, I, got, I got a program now, it's one button for me, you know, to, as a listener, to go get it. So it's a little education, it's a little different, but I am surprised at the number of people who are indeed cutting the antennas, especially an audience that, uh, you know, an older audience that has time, you would think. Yep, they, they want it when they want it, and uh, I am humbled by what they're saying so far. And I am guessing that there really aren't that many uh, news programs on the radio that focus on local events. It's becoming fewer and fewer, which is what baffles me because what separates terrestrial radio or, or you know, whatever, local radio, from Sirius and XM and all that stuff, it's local content. And yet, what are you doing? You're bringing in the out of market DJs that do the FM, you know, music shows or the talk shows, you know, when you start rolling in the Limbaugh's and the Hannity's and everything else, you can get that anywhere. You can get that stuff on the internet, but so what makes your station unique, I think, radio, is your local content. And the farm and newspapers had the same problem. You may remember the day when the newspapers, and I, I did newspapers for 25, 26 years, uh, we, oh, and I always fought for local on the front page because we lived here. You know, we are a local newspaper. Oh, no, we, you know, we got to have that national story on, you know, what happened in Zimbabwe yesterday on the front page of the paper. I'm kind of like, that's why they watch Uncle Walter. That's why people, you know, they're getting that news elsewhere. We're not going to compete with CNN or anybody else. What they don't get is what we have, and that's local. Plus, I'm, I mean, eight or nine minutes gives you some time to go into enough depth that people really know what's going on. It's not just a headline. There's a little more to it. And the same with your long form. I, I, you know, we have, I guess like any, any town our size, some pretty interesting local issues periodically oh, yeah. that need discussion to really get some understanding about what's going on with them. We do indeed. Parking was one of them. Mm -hmm. I think we're still uh, experiencing, is probably a generous word, the whole economic development situation where basically it was grabbed, and we talked about that last time, mm -hmm. grabbed and robbed from the Chamber of Commerce under threat of a cut of funding. There was no kumbaya, we're with you. It was like, we take it or you get no money from us. And you got your, you know, your Chamber of Commerce board folding. So okay, take what you want to do. Uh, that story's mm -hmm. still unfolding. I mean, there's some, there's some positive things that have happened with that scenario, the aftermath. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't believe in silver linings, but there's been some things that have happened there with good people and the good spots, I think. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, we're also, as taxpayers, are going to be paying three to four times a year what we are paying for the same service. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to do that? I've never heard a good answer to that yet. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, tell us how to get to your podcast. That's the hardest question of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, to make it easy, go to Hometown Headlines, of course, hometownheadlines.com, uh, and we, we put the podcast there every day. It's usually the fourth or fifth item on our homepage, and you just open up the file, and one of the first things you'll see is our new logo for the podcast, and the next thing you see is a little video, whatever, just a little box, and you just hit the arrow in that box, and you're there. You can play the podcast right from Hometown Headlines. Or you can click in. Uh, we send out an email now. We offer people an email alert. It's free, and it's whatever, if you have the rates and data charge thing, whatever it is. I don't know what that line is, but, mm. uh, yeah, that may cost you. But we send out, um, we thought if we had 25 people doing that, we're at 110 in a week. Wow. So 110 email alerts every morning strictly for the podcast that says, you know, pardon Krispy Kreme, but we're hot and ready, you know, <laughs> come get us. And they do. People do it. And, it's, and the easier part of that is that puts that link right on your cell phone. So you got to pop it. You come into Spotify or whatever else. Yeah. You look down for it says like HH podcast for Tuesday. Hit the little arrow there and it'll play. And you can even skip it if I start babbling about something. You have ability to skip through it as well. So it's, it's very convenient. It's very yeah. easy. Okay. Well, we will 
uh, have you review those methods again near the end of the show, uh, just in case. Um, but for now, we need to take a quick break, but we'll be talking more about the news of the day, so stay with us. Your life is filled with opportunities to show the world you can take charge. It's waking up each day with a mission. It's working each day toward a goal. It's choosing to rise. It's charging forward with a purpose. It's changing the course of your life and taking charge of your future. If you're ready to be a Take Charger, enroll at Georgia Highlands College today. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're having a conversation with John Druckenmiller of Hometown Headlines who has started a new podcast, which is a, yet a new way to get local news and also some long form discussion of issues that are uh, important to, to folks locally, especially. Um, the parking. How about the parking? How about that parking? Now, were you surprised at the uh, willingness of the commission to change their their plan? Um, I guess it's changed. It has it changed a couple of times? Yeah, at least twice, maybe more. Um, the surprise is November fifth, two thousand nineteen, which is election day for six incumbents uh, on the Rome City Commission. That said, there, what happened last night, being of course this is a Monday night's meeting, uh, versus a year ago is far different. I mean, they put that thing through by a pretty tight vote a year ago, where you know, they want a kiosk on Broad and two-hour parking and enforcement from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And um, you know, here comes that note that on May 20th, for some reason, four days or five days before five downtown graduations these new eight to eight two hour parking regs. We've had two hour parking since 1999, I think. Uh -huh. But anyway, the new regs are gonna come in just before graduation, which is the busiest time of the year in downtown Rome. So you got, you figure, you know, 2,500 people per graduation times five over a Friday night and a Saturday and all day Saturday. And people, I think that straw broke the camel's back. I hate that cliche, but it's true. Yeah. I think people said, that's enough. You know, this is graduation. We let the kids and the families and the grandmas and the grandpas alone. And you saw, you know, probably the largest uprising definitely on social media in Roman Floyd County in my 17 years. And I think others have said the same thing. Uh, people were mad. They were very mad. And I think you st the backlash on Broad Street already reeling from the smoking ordinance and I don't like smoking. I mean, I walk through a cloud of it outside of whatever the other night. Um, but I mean, I also I also don't like sitting there and inhaling someone's smoke. So I understand the smoking regulations. Mm -hmm. But what we did this year with smoking regulations is duplicate what's already on the books, but made more noise about it. So between the smoking thing, and then you have the parking thing. Don't forget, we are making sure all of our teenagers, 16 and under, are now off of Broad Street by 11 o'clock each night. And by the way, don't skateboard or ride bicycles. I'm not saying pro or con any of that. Uh -huh. People kind of said, y'all don't want us downtown. <laughs> Talk to merchants who will tell you that since January, and especially um, April and May, were some of the worst months they've had. You got, you got restaurants saying we're down $15,000 year over year for the yeah. month. That's pretty serious stuff. Yeah. And they basically customers start talking to them or stop talking to them or stop coming in and on May 20th, Craig uh, McDaniel, Commissioner Craig McDaniel, stood up and you know he, he shocked the heck out of me. And in a caucus meeting before the big meeting, said, I'm putting in a motion that we extend free parking to three hours a day. And that we roll back the enforcement from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. so you're not worried about coming downtown. If you're you know, a woman, I don't think many, many men get the hair dyed if you do, whatever. Sorry, I'm, I'm out of that league. You're in a barber or whatever shop for an hour and a half. You want to grab a sandwich. You're over two hours. So you're telling your customers, get off of Broad Street. You're two hours or up. Not what we want to do. We, we want people coming to Broad Street. I believe you pointed out last night, Broad Street, 100 through 500 block, cotton block through 
down near Heritage First, that area. That's $20 million a year in revenue, sales taxes, real estate taxes, bid taxes, and any other thing they want to drop on there. You want to jeopardize a $20 million a year franchise because you think it's going to be an easy money grab for city revenue? That's what went wrong here. And I think people finally said, we're done. The, um, the current parking regulation, the one that was settled on, I guess, last night, um, what is it now? It's, it's hard to keep up. It, with it, it, it's funny. Happening. Since May 20th, actually, it, it has been three hours of free parking or also enforcement from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you may have seen the little out-of-space car running around downtown with flashing lights. <laughs> That's, you know, looks like something out of one of these Google, you know, Google whatever things. Uh. Its job, you know, the two-person crew, supposed to be one originally, but now it's two, and I can understand why. It looks at your license plate, LPR, license plate reader or whatever it is, and it can tell you and all their data where people are parking all day. So if you were downtown over two hours, you know, under the old format, which they tossed out, thank God, it show you who's in violation, who's been downtown net total for the day. Well, what if you come downtown for breakfast and you got a breakfast meeting? And what if you come back downtown at 5.30 after work to have lunch or dinner with your family and you're there for an hour and a half. You maybe get ice cream or whatever it is, the frozen popsicles, whatever it is. You're over two hours. And so little LPR, you know, here comes, you know, little R2-D2 car <laughs> and you're in violation and the second time you're in violation, you're getting a ticket. And the third time it goes up and the fourth time, fifth time, sixth time. It's kind of like, can we chase revenue away from Broad Street any faster than we're mm -hmm. doing? Well, now it's three hours free and eight to six enforcement, Monday through Saturday. So the same system, but you have three hours instead Correct. of two. You have an extra hour you've never had at least since the two-hour window was proposed in 1999. And I don't know if you were here or not. I didn't get here until three years later, but mm. there wasn't a lot on Broad Street back in 1999. Right. right. You know, and, and then we used to have parking meters on Broad Street. They, you know, then you had Reverend Ben Mall come in. Let's throw one more caveat in here, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll be a time or not, but um, with all that's going on with downtown parking, keep in mind that we're looking at 20 to 28 new stores and restaurants that'll be open in August, September, October 2020 in the Kmart spot. Kmart is going to be completely leveled. Even the infrastructure is coming out. Ledbetter is going to put in all new everything. You've got all these new 20 to 28 stores and restaurants coming in here. And every space in that massive parking lot will have free parking. Mm -hmm. So you have the natural attraction of new restaurants and stores. You have free parking, plenty of free parking. All of a sudden, what are you saying to downtown? You're saying Riverbend Center all over again. Mm -hmm. So the concerns that prompted any parking regulation change or policy, um, will they be resolved? Good question. What they're going to do, what they said last night repeatedly, is they want to get this data from R2D to the car and compile it and analyze where the parking trends are. One of the parking trends going to be that downtown employees shouldn't be parking on Broad Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're jeopardizing their own jobs, but I mean, they can't enforce it, whatever it is. Hopefully, this will help chase some of that. But what's evident is we really have a parking problem in Broad Street on Friday and Saturday nights. Mm -hmm. And you're circling the block, you're cursing. It's like Commissioner Wendy Davis said last night, quite frankly, I like to circle the block because that means there are people downtown and they are in the restaurants and they are shopping and they are having vitality out there. Yeah. Anyway, it's, um, will, will it change? Maybe the decks, you know, the, the decks are available. People don't like them. They finally cleaned the decks up. But then again, there's, uh, you know, you can still go there on some days and some nights. Maybe you don't feel safe. But unfortunately, it's the nearest restroom for some people. And, you know, you take the elevator down. It's not a pleasant experience. Now, this cleaned it up some, but it's still not where it needs to be. Hmm. So, uh, other than parking, what are some of the big local issues that you're seeing City Commission election this year, if you may remember um, a few years ago we had the, city, the 2017 
city school board race had, I think, 15 candidates mm -hmm. in for seven seats. You may see a good dozen or more really? for six seats. Three in Ward 1, three in Ward 3. Uh, a few of them are on the bridge yet about whether they're going to you know, run again for re-election or not. A lot of folks are on the sidelines. A lot of people's minds were made up last night at that vote, pro or con. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they talk about wanting to review this in 90 days again. Now, this won't be reviewed again until after November 5th. <laughs> I'll, make, I'll bet money on that, okay? Well, what makes you, why do you suppose, because we have some commission elections where we barely have a contest. We've called off elections before without right. candidates, yeah. Um, why do you think this year will be different? Parking, smoking, uh, perhaps even the Chamber of Commerce thing. I mean, that was not done well. Give the city credit. Unlike the county commission, the city commission immediately went into the well, time out here, slow this down. This was being ramrod. The whole economic development thing was supposed to be ramrod in one day between the city and the county commissions. Uh -huh. City commission started saying, well, "How are we paying for this? Let's, you know, show me the dollars." Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, you know, the city came to a grinding halt, and the county is calling them bad names for slowing down progress. They're saying, "Well, how do we write checks?" They can't tell you today exactly how this is all going to play out over the next 11 years of the contract. Mm. Uh, but I think that's been a factor. Um, the economy's good. You mean jobs? You know, we talk about are our people employed? Quite frankly, um, we can't fill jobs right now. You going up and down, turn them a call. You know, I mean, now of course that's going to be the, you know, the what do you call it, the part-time jobs or the seven fifty an hour jobs. But look at even some of the major employers here in neighboring Bartow County, and we do have a lot of people going back and forth to work. They can't find people. So the economy is going to be an issue there, economic development, schools, recreation. It's going to be everything, and we are also on the cusp of the, hate to admit this, the 2020 presidential election. So I think people are kind of getting geared up for that, yeah, too. Yeah. So, um, so far, you've had one long-form podcast? One long-form podcast on parking. We... Uh, are looking for the right ideas for the next one. Unfortunately, the long form ones are going to cost some money to produce. And of course, you know we're and we're ha we're not doing advertising here, but um, we're we want to get some advertising coming in to make these things fundable, workable. Right. I guess. You know, again, we don't. Um, it's not a pay to play thing. It's a matter of we are news, but if we have sponsors, that's great. Um, but we will do. Uh, we I want to get at least three more long form podcasts in maybe before July fifth. Okay. To make sure, and, but we want to make sure and pick the right targets too. We had a great yeah. suggestion today about um, the whole underground Rome. Uh, every year, Mark Cochran leads an incredible tour of some of the things you know where the original Broad Street was before we raised it during after the floods and all. Right. And it's been a, we've done some radio shows on it. And there's been some stories on it in the newspaper. But Mark's an expert, so we're going to sit Mark down and kind of say, okay, you know, yeah, we're not visuals. It's going to be all audio. Walk us through this. Exactly how many snakes and how many rats and how many roaches and how many old beer bottles are down there. So. Well, I'll, I'll be listening to that one for sure. All right. We have to take a break. We will be back shortly. Don't go away. The color in my garden keeps the pink of my cheeks. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have meals on wheels. They're my savior. My name is Lola Silvestri. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Welcome back to Community Watch. We've been talking with John Druckenmiller of Hometown Headlines. And if you want to hear his daily podcast, a short podcast, you can go to hometownheadlines.com, go com. down a few spots, and you'll see a link there. I always say HH Podcast for Tuesday or something like that. And then the, uh, the other way you can, you can get to the podcast is through Spotify. You can do Spotify. We will send you a text every day if you'd okay. like. Just give us your phone number. You can send it to me. You can, you can go and do it yourself. And we'll send you a text that works exactly like this. Here's your little phone. Here's the link on the bottom of that text. You push that little button right there. It comes up. You scroll down till you see 
this thing not working? <laughs> and then right. we'll listen, listen we'll on we'll Spotify. Test it out. Yeah, sorry but about that. Look for that on hometownheadlines.com. Thank you. See you next time on Community Watch.